and welcome to the gospel of this week. And this week, I want to ask you a question. Do you have a pure heart? Hallelujah. Yes, I want to talk about having a pure heart. You know, I'm not a Greek scholar, but I have a good, you know, Bible program on my computer. So I went digging a little bit and I discovered what pure actually means. Listen to this. It means sincere, genuine, free from corrupt desire, from guilt of sin. That's a big E right there. Free from anything that is false purified, cleansed, and by pruning so that you can bear fruit. That is really good. And of course, we know that the heart, it's the center of our spiritual life. And so right here, when God is looking for a pure heart, um, let's just be a little practical here. What does it mean to have a pure heart? Here, listen to this, being pure, involves you being transparent, being real. What you see is what you get. This, God loves that so much. He's looking for real, authentic people. Having a pure heart is having an uncompromising desire to always do the right thing, a desire to please God. If that's not in you, that you always want to do good, means you don't have a pure heart because a pure heart... I mean, I'm not saying you are perfect, you always do everything right, but your inner desire is you don't want to mess up, you don't want to displease God, you don't want to sin, you might make a mistake, but you don't want to. You see what I'm talking about, amen? Having a pure heart has no deceit, no hypocrisy, no hidden mo motives, mo motives, yeah, and it's not double-minded. Oh, uh, I, we see that in Psalm 24, verse 4. You say, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is, what is false and does not swear deceitfully. You see that heart has no deceit and nothing false. That is a pure heart. A pure heart is also a heart that is free from a guilty conscience and the guilt of sin. You know, that doesn't mean here again that we're never going to mess up, but it means that we live with a heart that is free from guilt. If we do something wrong, we are quick to repent, quick to say, Lord, forgive me. You know what I mean? You should never live with a guilty conscience. You should not live with a consciousness of sin. You should be free you should be pure. If you do have, you live with that consciousness of sin, constantly guilty, you don't have a pure heart. And you say, what do I do then? Well, go to God. If you've done something wrong, repent. And if not, if you keep on carrying that same guilt from a sin that you did, you know, uh, 10 months ago, then go to God boldly and just say, Lord, I am the righteousness of God. I receive your love. Your blood is more powerful than my sin. And move on. Get on. And let that sin behind. You are free from it. Amen. Stop beating yourself up. Hallelujah. And so in order to get there, to have a pure heart, there is a call. The call to the pure heart. Have a heart to, be, to have a pure heart. To be willing, if it's not the case, to allow God to purify your heart. That requires humility, really. And I love that in 1 John 3, 3, he says, if anyone has this hope, that what hope? To see God face to face, to have intimacy with God. If anyone has this hope in him, he purifies himself just as God is pure. We should have that desire. If that's not the case, and you realize as I was talking about what an, uh, 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 when a heart is not pure and you realize, whoa, that's me. Oh, those, that's me. Then now is the time to say, Lord, I want to be pure like you're pure. P purify my heart. And you say, well, Audrey, that's good and dandy, but how do I do that? Well, that's why we need the word and the spirit. Why the word? Because you see, your spirit is completely 
free. Your, your spirit is pure. It has been recreated in the image of God, which is holy, righteous, ho and, and, and pure. Yes, but your soul, that part of you that thinks, that chooses, that has emotion, that part of you where even your conscious is, is if it's defiled, if it's impure, it, you'll always have in your heart that disconnection. And so that's the part of you, your soul, that needs to be purified. And how do you do it? With the word. That's what James said in James 1, verse 21 and 22. He said, therefore, put away all the filthiness, the wickedness, or the impurities, I add, and receive with humility the, the word of God, which is able to save or purify your soul. And be doers of the word and not just hearers only. And how will you do that? With the help of the Holy Spirit. This is what Philippians 2, 13 says. It is God, the Holy Spirit in you, that will cause you to will, to have the desire and to do. You see, when you read the word, the Holy Spirit will expose some wrong motives, some falsehood, some hypocrisy, anything impure in your heart, the Holy Spirit will expose it, amen, and through the word. And when you see that, when you hear that, and when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, just say, yes, Lord, obey, and say, okay. And when you say, yes, Lord, and you choose to obey and submit yourself to be purified by the word and the spirit, then immediately there will be a power, a grace that will be available to you to do it. Amen? It's just that easy. And why do we want to be pure? Why should we want to have a pure heart? Why? Because this call comes with a promise. Do you know uh, that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, Jesus sent this promise, says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. You see, there are a lot of people out there, they think they know God, but they know God intellectually. They know God is, God is big. They know God is the creator. They know God is love. They know God is good, but they know it from the head. They never know it from the heart. Why? Because they have never seen God. They never had that revelation. They, the eyes of their heart have not been opened to see the reality of who God really is. But how can you see God? How can you have a revelation of who God is when you have a pure heart? That's why, my friends, you and I, we want a pure heart because we want to know God. And not just with our head, but with our heart. We want to know his heart. We want to know who he is. We want to know his ways. We want to know what he likes, what he doesn't like, what makes him tick, what makes him, you know. We want to know everything about God. Why? Because the bottom line is we were created for intimacy with God. And we can only have intimacy if we know God and we can only know God when we see God and we can only see God when we have a pure heart. So you see the importance for you and I to desire and to have a pure heart. And it is right there. I pray for you that the eyes of your heart would be opened, enlightened, that you may know and see God and be in awe. Oh, how good, how amazing, how awesome God is. God bless you. And you know, uh, if you don't understand a little bit about the heart, I have a teaching. We'll put the link under to make you understand a little bit more about the heart. And until then, see you next week for another gospel.